Hello, and welcome to another pandemic report. Um, what's new to report now? The girls are double vaccinated now with some Pfizer's. Um, me and Leslie are still waiting for our second dose. Um, but it is coming. We do have that scheduled. Um, things here in Ontario, oddly enough, we're in, which is really, really weird. So we're in, uh, I guess, stage three. Um, we had a stage, a three stage system that went into effect. Um, once um, the vaccines rolled out. So stage one was um, as long as 60% of adults have one dose, we can move into stage one. To get into stage two, we needed 70% of adults with one dose and 20% being fully vaccinated. To get into stage three, we need 70 to 80% of adults with one dose and 25% of those have to be fully vaccinated. Stage three is essentially everything is open. We still have restrictions, masks and stuff like that, um, and reduced capacities. But we have sporting events, concerts, movies, all that kind of stuff, um, religious, uh, you know, going to church and synagogue, etc. Um, all that is, is up. Um, gatherings at houses are, you know, allowed. But again, it's all reduced numbers. They're not super specific. <sighs> they, they, one of the problems I find with their, their system is it, A, we went through stage one to three really, really quickly because we rolled out vaccines and all those people who wanted to get vaccines were able to get vaccines um, despite difficulties. See one of the other pandemic reports about that. Um, but like I said, girls here have gotten two doses. We have a second dose coming up. Um, they're even debating... Uh, you know, different provinces, whether um, third doses will be given, um, because right now Canada is getting a lot of Pfizer. We do have uh, Moderna, but we also got a lot of the AstraZeneca because a lot of people who were kind of on the fence got the, Ast you know, because we got AstraZeneca, <laughs> whatever. Here's the story in short. We couldn't get Pfizer or Moderna, so we got a bunch of AstraZeneca because we wanted to get the population vaccinated. So because the only people who are getting the Pfizer and the Moderna and stuff earlier on were, you know, frontline workers, the people who were at risk, um, older people and stuff like that, uh, and old age homes and such, though they were getting, you know, primary slotted into that. Well, that used up all of our available to that. So we got it. We were able to get the AstraZeneca. Well, AstraZeneca because of problems. Okay. So first it was, um, they started change they kept you know like people older people can get it and then started reducing it so it got to the point where i think it was 30 years and up or maybe 40 years and up could get astrazeneca but they did we didn't have enough of the other stuff um so everybody was going out and they were saying go get your shot it doesn't matter what it is just go get it right and so a bunch of people got the astrazeneca a lot of people and then you know because of the the small percentages of of problems that were happening with that particular uh, vaccine the government decided you know what um, we're gonna try and get as much of the as the Pfizer and the Moderna as possible um, and they managed to do so but that left a whole bunch of people who already had the AstraZeneca going um, we don't want to mix our vaccines because that hasn't been tested or for whatever reason or they just don't want even if it was tested they didn't want to mix it up um, they didn't. Maybe they never even wanted to get Pfizer or Moderna in the first place because of the, you know, their mRNA type vaccines. Completely different thing. Um, so the government went, okay, we'll get some more AstraZeneca. Well, they've done that. So a lot of people have two doses of AstraZeneca, which I believe only gives you like a sixty percent uh, type of immune rate compared you know when it comes to especially the new delta variant of the virus i could be wrong comment down below i i'm going off the top of my head um so there is debate whether they will you know putting it out there you know what if you've had two astrazenecas and you want a pfizer shot we'll you know we'll, we'll do a third one but that's still being debated who knows if that'll happen or not um but the fact of the matter is it seems that um because of the new Delta variant 
any like 60% seems like it's pretty decent, right? But they're saying you need 90% fully vaccinated to be able to get to um, sort of like a herd immunity. And even with the Delta variant, that's not really a super herd immunity because apparently even if you're still vaccinated, you can still get the Delta variant and pass it along. But your symptoms most likely, not necessarily, will be reduced. It's the same with all vaccines, right? The higher the percentage chance, the less likely you are either possibly getting it, or if you do get it, your symptoms won't be great. But it, you can still be a carrier and transmit it. But they're finding that if... I think in the States, they were running about 60% fully vaccinated... Uh, and they started way before we did. Um, and the Delta variant is running crazy down there. Um, and with the AstraZeneca only being 60% effective, it's almost essentially the same thing. <laughs> so even if we were like 100% uh, vaccinated with AstraZeneca, we'd still only be 60% effective, and thus the Delta variant would run rampage. So again, I'm kind of going off on a tangent there, but yeah, so... Governments here are debating whether going for a third shot. Um, they essentially want everybody to get uh, at least Moderna, but preferably Pfizer. I think Moderna gets you up to 80%, Pfizer gets you up to 90% um, based off new data. And that's what that's what they want people to do. So two Pfizers, an AstraZeneca and a Pfizer, even a Moderna and a Pfizer um, is best. If you have two Modernas, don't worry about it. You're going to be good. Um, but I'm hearing news from other provinces that they're starting here in Ontario. We're still, you know, kind of going strong with the whole program and, and keeping it up. And, uh, so I'm hearing in the other provinces, some of the problems, they're starting to shut down certain things or open, you know, things up almost fully. And one of them happens to be Alberta, which is going to a, the, the, they're, I guess they're only going to test for COVID in hospitals. Um, they're going to remove, you know, uh, asymptomatic testing. Um, they're going to remove masking restrictions. Oh, they're just essentially going to open wide up. Um, and they're not going to do any um, tracing. No more tracing, you know, of the virus. Um, they're, they say they're going to leave it up to the population to do that kind of stuff because the population is, is is trustworthy that way. Well, <laughs> they're probably getting rid of a lot of these things because they didn't do very well in the first place. Um, because I know here in Ontario, um, uh, yeah, tracing of the virus, they just didn't put enough money, resources, etc. behind that. So they never really got ahead of the virus um, in order to combat that, nor did they really, it, it was always, it's always voluntary, right? It's always, everything is voluntary. So even if they did say, Hey, you may have been exposed to, to, to COVID, please either get tested or, you know, if somebody shows symptoms, again, we all know that you can have this virus and not show symptoms. If showing symptoms, you know, make sure you hunker down yeah yeah you don't go outside you don't you don't communicate with other people um and if possible just don't do that in general right so at the time i think it was 14 days was was the uh the original thing and now we're down to 10 i think is what they've reduced it to uh, i don't know but yeah so th that's the way we were going in ontario and yeah when you leave it up to people it's like well you should do this people are like mm, no Probably not. <laughs> so you may get 10 or 20 percent people go, oh, you know, either because they're scared or because they're, you know, they're good citizens and they want to do their part, will then say, okay, I have become in contact. I'm going to go get tested. Well, I'm going to give you a little story that's literally happened to us. Um, so one area where you would think would be really easy to track stuff right um i do know that restaurants and stuff were taking down names right i don't even think they're doing that anymore um 
but they were taking down names at one point so they knew everybody who was in that restaurant during a time period such so if an outbreak for some reason a staff or anybody came to that you know restaurant during that time they could then notify everybody on that list whether you gave your proper list or name and contact information or not that wasn't up to them they didn't care um you know some places i'm sure asked for id that showed you know contact information and your name proper name that match had photo or something like that but other places didn't and i know that for a fact um I don't know if it was regulated that they were supposed to or not. I, uh, not part of anything I'm involved in, so I wouldn't. I didn't need to look that kind of information up. But one thing would be schools, right? You, you they take attendance. They know everybody who's going to be there. They know everybody who that that they should a, a child who is infected have come in contact with. Well, we got a phone call saying that someone on the school bus that both Sarah and Emily take did test positive for COVID. Great. And they gave us the date of when they were on the bus and stated we should, you know, in the, I think it was a recording or something, we should bunker down for 14 days. We, we got that notification at night of the 13th day. That doesn't really make for any good tracing whatsoever, does it? No, it does not. Because for 13 days, if we had, you know, had the girls been infected, then we became infected, etc., etc., we could have been, pa they could have been passing it through the school and all this kind of stuff. We could have been passing it to people who were meeting up with or or whatever, you know, shopping at work, you know, that kind of stuff. Despite any precautions that are being taken, it's still possible that's why this stuff is still happening. So, <laughs> yeah, um, I know Australia did and a lot of Asian countries did such a good job of dealing with it because they did trace and they did isolate and they did make sure people were isolating or getting tested. And it wasn't, I don't know that they meant, well, probably some of them did mandate that they had to do certain things, but other ones it was just like, because somebody was going to be checking to make sure you're doing your, you know your your duty to society people did their duty to society they didn't they didn't go around flaunting it and have big rallies because they were really upset at they at the fact that they had to wear a mask and stuff right that don't I don't even want to get started on that that's another video probably um but <laughs> it, it's just one of those things where if you aren't on top of it and you aren't able to trace it like within like a day. You have to be on top of it, right? Like so somebody tests positive, boom, that day people need to be on it. It's like, okay, the test has come positive. Not only are we telling you that you have tested positive, but we need to know where you have been over the last 14 days. Everybody, everybody's test positive. Everybody in the house, let's do it. And then, and go, and go, and go, and spread it, and spread it, and spread it, and make sure these people, you know, are doing their due diligence and are getting tested and all and continue along that lines until the fact you know like that bubble just sort of shrinks in because when it gets too far out it's it, it, it increases exponentially and so does the workload to the point where yeah you just get to the point where it's like huh wow hmm we weren't able to get to you until like a month later so really it was pointless to get to you but you may have had COVID just so you know so yeah, big fail in terms of um, <laughs> tracing on, tar on this virus here in Canada, uh, at least in Ontario. I I'm guessing the rest of the Canada is probably the same. Um, and, and I'm sure it's a matter of money, right? Everybody needs to get paid. There's a lot of work to do, a lot of hours involved. So yeah, I mean, the amount of money they're spending just having people, you know, testing and giving vaccines and producing vaccines and all that kind of stuff is nuts. 
So, um, yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know what to say about it. I we we couldn't. We really were blown away when we heard and did the math that it was. We were told to to you know hunker down for 14 days when we got notified that we came in contact essentially 13 days we'll say 13 even though it was the night of the 13th and so it was almost 14 anyways um, days prior so I don't know if you've you know let me know did anybody you know become infected or come in contact with somebody who was infected and how was the tracing how quickly was it done in your area in your situation i'd love to i'd love to hear about it comment down below but yeah we're all okay hopefully you are as well um things are opening it up but you still gotta you know still gotta do your due diligence man i don't i don't care if you have you know they have, aren't mandating masks where you are wear a mask like just do it for now for now um until you start getting up into the 80 to 90 percent vaccination rate it's not worth it and even then it's still transmissible i think this is here to stay folks we're not getting rid of it um i am pretty sure the governments are not going to be going through this whole let's get another round of vaccines going because we got another variant and we've managed to get a vaccine for that um no, there are, I think that this is going to be it. This is going to be the one type of vaccine, and it goes, you know, goes around. Hopefully, maybe some of the countries who get it later on and develop it late, you know, develop a later vaccine, have one that actually works against all of the variants of COVID, and maybe they'll be better off. I don't know, but I'm worried about uh, the young kids right now because they don't have any vaccines, at least not here in Canada. But that's another video for another time. Thanks for watching. Till next video, take care. Stay safe.